Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finchingfield, and today we're going to do something just a little bit different. I want to assure you that I do read all of the comments. I don't always respond, but I am reading them. One of the questions that I see frequently in the comments is, what do you do with all that weaving? Okay, that's a fair question. Now, part of me is thinking, okay, well, you know, the same thing I do with all the quilts that I make. I shove it in a box and put it in a closet. At least this takes up less space. But weaving is the kind of thing that, because it's so small, you want to show it off. You want to put it on your garments or wear it on your person. But the narrow wares are so versatile, you can wear them with anything, either modern or medieval. So you don't have to keep it exclusively for your medieval wear. I'm going to show you 10 ways you can use your tablet weaving in your everyday life. Now belts are probably the easiest go-to option. You can tie it in the front and leave the tails long. You can tie it in the back. You can even tuck an apron into it to protect your clothes. If it's long enough, you could wrap it around yourself twice and tie it in the front, and then it has kind of a 12th century look. Looks great with a blio. But don't just limit yourself to belts. I once made a piece for a friend of mine, and he wanted to turn them into suspenders. Now, he lives a couple thousand miles away, so I didn't actually get to see the finished product, and he didn't send me a picture, but he did say that it turned out really cool. So Steve, if you're watching, send me a picture, okay? Another great way to use them is for bag straps. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a clutch or a purse, a satchel, a messenger bag. With a bit of hardware, you can make it adjustable to the wearer, or you could just cut it to length and sew it directly onto a D-ring or even directly onto the bag. For a real rockin' look, you can make it into a guitar strap. Now, it doesn't matter if you do pop, country, or Mongolian throat singing, you'll take center stage. And if it's really eye-catching, maybe they won't even notice that you don't know how to play the instrument. Another great way to use tablet weaving is for trim on garments. Uh, you could use it around your cuffs, around your neckline. For apron dresses, you can use a strip across the chest. A lot of people add it to the bottom of garments, which not only gives the garment a little more shape, but adds a little bit of weight so that the tunic doesn't ride up your leg as you walk. Or you could do what I did and use it as trim all the way around my Norse coat. You could also use it to cover seams on a garment. You know how when children grow, sometimes they sprout up four inches over the winter and the next summer the tunic fits fine, but it's too short? Well, now you can add a chunk of fabric on the bottom and use some tablet weaving to cover up that seam. This looks really amazing if you're using a contrasting fabric and then add that tablet weaving on there. Looks really, really sharp. You can also use it if you, you know, cut your fabric wrong and you accidentally make it too short and you have to add a little extra because you goofed. I've never done that. The great thing about doing tablet weaving in a heavier yarn like carpet warp is that it's really, really strong and it makes great dog leashes. This is Luna. This piece of tablet weaving you may remember from the Tablet Weaving for Absolute Beginners. This is what I made that piece for. I've even talked to a friend of mine about making horse reins out of tablet weaving. Maybe for next summer. The narrow bands can be used for winnegas, which are leg wraps. This is a form of Norse leg warmers. These help protect men and women slogging through the icy, snowy tundra of the northern lands. This is my very agreeable teenage son modeling them uh, in jeans. Yeah, well, can't have everything. But hey, I distracted him from his homework, so who's the awesome mom now? If you have a very fine piece of work, like this little diminutive one that I did in silk, you can use it as a drawstring for a pouch. Or perhaps you could use it as a headband to add a splash of color to your plain linen head covering. You can either wear it as I have in this image, where, you know, you put it right around to the back of your head, or you could wrap it around the top part of your head like a circle. If you have a long piece of tablet weaving, say four yards or more, you could butt up the edges and zigzag them together. Just sew it around and around and around until you get to the end, tucking the end under. You sew a heavy piece of linen to the bottom and add a strap and you've got a fetching little bag. I used a leftover scrap of tablet weaving once to make a key fob. Actually, I made a bunch of them. Gave them out as Christmas presents one year. The bright color of my keychain makes it really easy to find in my bottomless purse. Lanyards are often a requirement for workplaces, whether you have a badge to get in and out or just a name tag. So why not make it beautiful, durable, and personal? You could make them in your company's colors, uh, in the colors of your university, 
or maybe the colors of your favorite sports team. Or maybe you prefer to make them in a rainbow of colors. The pattern for this one will be available in my blog. So technically that's already more than 10 ideas. And I haven't even scratched the surface, really. You could use them to edge tablecloths or pillowcases or put on your Christmas tree or a centerpiece for your holiday table or curtain tiebacks or wrapping presents or you could give them as presents. So there's a lot of uses for tablet weaving. You're only limited by your imagination. So grab your loom and let's get weaving. We could do the one that I just showed you. So I know this is kind of a short video this time around, but thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week on Weave Along with Eloise. Bye.